Uh, so good to meet you, and uh, Prime Minister, it's a, it's a real pleasure to, to welcome you. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to, to go to, uh, to Delphi uh, this year because I'm traveling tomorrow, so it's a pleasure uh, to host you here to take stock of the progress that our bilateral relations uh, have made over the past uh, uh, years, and I understand there's also much more we can do in terms of economic um, uh, cooperation, uh, but also to congratulate you uh, on uh, your commitment to implementing the necessary reforms to come closer um, uh, to the European family. Uh, you've made a lot of progress, and I think this needs to be recognized, and we will continue to support you uh, on this journey. We know it's complicated uh, and difficult, uh, but uh, we, we view you and, and, and your country as a bright spot uh, in, in, in the Western Balkans uh, in, in terms of uh, really honoring your uh, commitments uh, and uh, I think uh, your success uh, is a broader success for the, for the Western Balkans. So again, welcome. Thank you so much for such a warm welcome and uh, we really feel at home in Greece, in uh, Montenegrins. I think uh, we, are, uh, we are very close to Greece. We feel culturally, historically and so many other ways connected. So it's always a pleasure, especially having the Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is, uh, who is uh, such a uh, Greekophile, and he's, uh, he speaks Greek, and uh, he's... Uh, uh, it's an exaggeration. Kala, kala, yeah, exactly. kala, 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 kala. So he's, uh, he's, you know, I, I made sure that the Minister of Foreign Affairs had to speak Greek. Yeah. <laughs> that, so that's one of the qualities we were looking at, finding a Minister of Foreign Affairs. But in general, I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, and uh, I find Greece as a strategic ally for Montenegro. It is uh, a country that we share values and that we want to share the market. That's something that's very uh, dear to my heart. I'm, I'm very focused on the economy and economic growth in Montenegro. So this is one of the prime things we are, uh, we are here and that's why where we are. Uh, but that said, uh, in order to push forward, uh, you, you touched upon some of the necessary reforms. Uh, in order to have uh, even exponential economic growth that we promise to our citizens and that our citizens actually expect us, as well as uh, to have European, speedy European integrations, which 80 to 85 percent of Montenegrins actually want, which is unprecedented everywhere, I think, mm -hmm. especially in the Western Balkans. So uh, to meet these expectations, rule of law, collateral enforcement, mm -hmm. security for investors, security for the citizens, for predictability of the, of the legal system is an absolute must. Mm -hmm. So uh, fully aware of that, we have jumped in fighting like hard for these, for these uh, things that were missing in the past. Uh, I think Montenegro is a completely different country since December 23 and, or January 24 for a number of reforms that we can go through. Uh, we have had nominations in judicial council that we didn't have for 11 years. Mm -hmm. We were unable to change uh, uh, to change the judges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, in five, only five months, we tried to do as many reforms as, as possible for these two major goals. Uh, as I said, economy and European integrations. Well, again, thank you so much uh, for being here.